When you've used a programming language for a period of time, you start to get some ideas and opinions on how that language should be used. In this video, I'm going to go over my opinions on how JavaScript should be written. Some of the things that I'm going to cover in this video are actual code smells, and when I come across them in pull requests, I do ask the developer to change them. However, if it's just my opinion, I rarely ask the developer to change it. Sometimes I might point it out that there might be a better way to do this, but I won't request that they change it in order for me to approve the pull request just because it's my opinion. The first thing that I really don't like is when you have too many parameters in a function, and this is a classic. So this function here has three arguments. So we can't actually omit any of these arguments when we call it. If we go to call find users, we have to supply the older than, younger than, and the gender. So let's refactor this to be much more usable. So I'm going to wrap this in an object. So now our function takes a single argument, which is an object, allowing us to omit certain properties. However, we're then using those properties inside of this find many function. So what we can do now is say gender it might be optional. So we can wrap gender in some brackets. We can spread this and then we can say gender and end gender. And now if gender is omitted when the function is called, then gender won't be added to the find many function. You could also do that to the younger than and the older than properties. Another benefit of doing this is when it comes to TypeScript. So now that we have a single object here, we can supply a single interface here for the object. So this can be find users props. And now we can define this interface. And then we can start defining the properties inside of here. If we had an array of arguments like we did earlier, we would need to define each property on here individually. And this starts to get a little bit messy. It's easier if you wrap it up into a single interface, move it to a different file, and then import it into your function call. So my next opinion isn't really an opinion. This is an actual code smell. So this is when you await and return data inside an async function. So what I'm doing here is I'm defining user as a wait fetch because fetch returns a promise. And then I'm going to return users. The problem with this is a wait here is useless because fetch users is going to return a promise because it's an async function. If we hover over this here, you can see that the signature says that we're still returning a promise. If we remove the await and we hover over here, we're still returning a promise that has our response inside. This of course doesn't apply if we're using a try catch. So I'm going to uncomment await here and I'm going to wrap this in a try catch. And then I'm just going to return null. And in this instance, we do need to await because we need to see if our fetch function here returns an error or resolves a promise. And if it does return an error, we need to catch that error in our catch block here. So I'm going to demonstrate that here with this async function that just throws an error. So you can see here that it does return a promise. We know of course that it's actually just going to throw. I'm going to remove this line here. Then I'm going to await and call throws. And then I'm going to console.log inside of our catch block here. And then of course I need to execute fetch users and let's execute this function. And you can see that we do go down to the catch block. Your code returned an error. Let's remove await here and see what happens. You can see that we get an error here. Something bad happened but we never actually get to our catch block. And so our try catch isn't working as expected. So the next one is just my opinion. I think that you should use the function keyword over a fat arrow or an anonymous function assigned to a constant. And the reason that I think you should do this is because by prefixing the function with the word function, you're self-documenting in a way. So if I have a function that is just named const func, by just reading this part here, I don't actually know if this is a function. And so when I'm scanning through the code, I can see this here, but I need to read the rest to see that this is actually a function. Whereas if I change this to the word function, I now just need to read this part here. And I know that this is of course a function. The other reasons that I like this is that the function keyword is consistent throughout languages. Most other languages don't have the concept of fat arrows. There are some differences here as well. The this binding is different and hoisting is going to be a little bit different as well. So now that we have function my func, we can call my func up above where function is defined. So let's execute this. And 
and you can see that we get a console log of our this binding. Let's change this back to a fat row, const my func equals, and you can see that we get an error because we can't use my func before it's initialized. That's because functions are hoisted to the top where fat arrows are not. If we move the call for my func down and then we execute this again, you can see that the this binding is just an empty object. We don't get a this binding for the actual function. These differences also translate over to things like factories. So let's say const my factory is equal to an object. Now I'm going to have method one, and this is going to return method one. Then I'm going to have method two, and method two is going to be a property that is assigned a function, and this is the equivalent of a fat arrow function. I'm going to say return method two. And inside of method one, I'm going to call console.log this dot method two. Let's execute this. And you can see that from method one, we actually do have access to method two. Let's move this down and see if we have access to method one in method two. And you can see now that method one in method two is undefined. So if you do need access to this, then you have to use the standard function syntax inside of your factory. This one is just an opinion as well, and this is to use functions over classes. However, I think that you should stick to one or the other throughout your code base. So if your code base is primarily classes, then I would pull it up in a pull request if people are using functions where they could be using a class. But on the other hand, if the code base is mostly functions, I wouldn't really like to see any classes inside of a pull request, and I would pull that up as well. So you can see here that we have a class called user service, and we're defining a property called users, and then we have a couple of methods here as well. One to add a user, and then one to get a user. So to use this, we need to instantiate user service and assign it to a variable, and then we can start to use it. However, you don't need a class to do this. You could either use a factory or you could just have the functions out in the open. So if we were to turn this into a factory, we could say function user service. And then we just need to return an object here. And now we can get rid of our this property. Now this is going to behave the same as a class. You can even call it with the new keyword. Let's run this. And you can see that this is just going to behave exactly the way our class did. The way that I would prefer this as written is to not use a factory at all. I think in this case, it's unnecessary. So we can remove this, remove our return block here. And now we can just say function add user and function get. Now we don't need to instantiate anything at all. And I can simply call add user and then I can call get. And we get the same result back. Okay, so this is a TypeScript specific one. And again, this is just my opinion. I probably wouldn't pull this up in a code review. So what my opinion is, is that you shouldn't add a return type to functions that aren't used in your code. So what I mean by this is, for example, we have this component here called home page. And then we have an interface called next page, where if you've used Next.js, you know that you don't actually use the pages in your code base. Next is going to consume them and render them out for you. So defining a return type here on the page is redundant. It doesn't actually add any value to anyone developing in your code base. So we could just remove this here and that's how you would fix that one. So this one is just an opinion and I know I'm gonna get some hate in the comments for this. So if you disagree, let me know in the comment section below, but I don't think there's any use case for switch cases. And the reason I think that is because I think the syntax is really weird and it's lengthy and it's overly complicated. You can easily solve these problems with functions and early returns or with just an object. So you can see that I have this function here called get rating text, and this takes a rating. And then we're going to create a let and then we're going to assign the text depending on what the rating is. And then if we don't get any text, then we're going to throw an error and then we're going to return the text. I really don't like this function 
and I would be looking to refactor this as soon as possible. So how would I prefer to refactor this? Well, I think in this case, you could probably use an object, but you can also use a function with early returns. So I'm going to remove this let text here, and I'm going to say if rating is equal to one, then I just want to return this text here. And then I can copy this down a bunch of times and then I can start filling in these properties here. I think this is a much nicer way to do this function. Okay, so you can see the result here. We have if rating equals one, if rating equals two. I think this is much easier to read. And then down the bottom here, we don't have to wrap out error inside of an if statement. The reason I think this is easy to read is because you can read this line here and this line here independently. If we go back to the switch statement, you can see that I can't read this line here or this line or any of my cases independently. I have to go back up to the top of the switch statement to see what rating is comparing against. I've always found this really confusing when you get really complicated scenarios. Another way to do this is to define an object. So I have this object here, which is our rating to text map. And then inside of my function, I can just say const text is equal to rating text map. And then I can get my rating and put that in there to pick the property out of the object. Then I can just return text. If I need to have my error, I can wrap it back up in an if statement, and then I can throw that before I return. If you need to add a default here, then you can say or default text. And I find this to be a much simpler way to do this conditional. If you wanted to, you could also move your rating map out into another file and have a really simple function here. Okay, so this one is also just an opinion and I've expressed this one online before and I have actually received some hate for it. So if you want to spread some hate, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always up for it. And this is just to avoid else statements. I rarely ever use else statements in my code. I go through my day job without using them almost ever. So in this scenario here, we have an if statement with a return and we can just remove this here. This code does absolutely nothing. If you have code in your code base, that does absolutely nothing, you probably should remove it. Okay, so this one is just an opinion and I would actually be a little bit careful with it because you don't wanna get into this trap where you're creating abstractions that you don't need to create. So this is to move logic into functions and make them pure where possible. So you can see that we have this function here that takes an array of ratings and then we're going to return two properties, an average and a median. So we can split the average and the median out into two different functions. So I can say function average and then I can copy this here and then I can return it. Pass in the ratings and then down inside of our object here, we can just execute this and then pass in our ratings. Then we could do the same for median And then we need to move this logic as well. Now, if we collapse these two functions here and these two functions, we're going to assume that they're well tested and they do exactly what we think they're going to do. And now our calculate scores function is suddenly much simpler. Okay, so this last one can get a little bit complicated and it is just an opinion, but if you don't follow this, your code can get very smelly. And this is a real life scenario that I've actually come across that caused a real security problem. So it's to avoid redeclaring variables. And the reason you want to do this is because redeclaring variables, it makes them hard to track. And when your code flows from top to bottom, it's much easier to follow. So we have this function here called single sign on and it takes three properties is mobile, auth code, and ID token. And so the scenario is that we have a single sign-on function 
that can be used by a mobile device or it can be used by the web. And in these two scenarios, we're passing different properties in. So for the web, we're going to pass in an auth code. And then for a mobile device, we're going to pass in an ID token. So what we're doing here is we're declaring decoded. And then we're going to verify with our SSO provider with the ID token if we're a mobile user. But if we're not a mobile user, then we must be a web user and we must have an auth code. So we're going to use that auth code to verify with our auth provider. Then when we get our auth tokens back, we're going to have an access token and then we're going to decode this access token. So when I first saw this, I freaked out because every time I say jwt.decode, I get really scared. But the reason that this was actually okay is because we only get an access token if we're verified with that auth provider and we're simply just decoding it to get the payload out. Whereas you can see up here that decoded comes from our auth provider. So this might seem like a silly example, but this is code that I actually come across. This is the more trivialized version, but the code that I actually come across was very hard to follow. And this is authentication code. You need to understand this code line by line exactly how it works. So how would I refactor this? Well, firstly, because we have two different paths, we have a mobile path and we have a web path, I would split those two out. So I would make them distinct paths depending on what the user has passed in. But for this example, but in this example, if I couldn't split them out, I would remove let decoded and I would simply return here. And now I've covered my mobile path and I only have the web path to go. I would remove my let variables here. I would assume we have an auth code. And if we didn't, then I could do an early check to say, if not auth code, then I could throw new error. Now I can remove this if statement here. And this if statement is what was blocking us from not being able to define constants because we had to define let because we wanted to use them outside of the scope of the if statement. So now that we've removed that, we can define these as constants. And then we can do another check here. If not auth token, throw new error. No access token. And now we can remove this else statement. We can remove this if, and we can simply return. And you can see that this code is now much simpler. So if you disagree with any of these, let me know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.